all right guys so today oh, i hope you guys are not seeing my <laughs> okay guys so today i just want us to have a bit more of a conversation instead of me telling you what causes this what are the diagnoses what are the clinical symptoms and how to treat it i thought i should probably make this video in a more chilled manner in a more of a conversation type of a thing so we're gonna have a conversation today about pink eye in sheep and goats and i will mention a little bit about pink eye in cattle but mostly it's gonna be pink about pink eye in sheep and goats okay so have you ever seen pink eye in your farm i'm sure you have have you seen your goat's eye or your sheep's eye looking like this or looking like that and obviously you went into a panic mode and be like what is this and then obviously if your goat was partially blind and not able to find food and find water that can also be very stressful for any farmer and it's also very stressful for the animal because the condition you can imagine is actually painful okay the eye that eye condition can be actually be very painful to the animal and cause the animal to be very very uncomfortable okay so pink eye is more severe in goats from what i've seen it's more severe in goats than in sheep but it occurs in both goats and sheep and it also Okay, is in cattle. Um, it is caused by an organism or a bacteria called um, mycoplasma as well as some um, chlamydia. Sometimes chlamydia can also be responsible for causing pink eye in your goats and in your sheep. Okay, in cattle, it is caused by a completely different type of a bacteria called Moraxella bovis. This, um, uh, this Moraxella bovis that causes pink eye in sheep. Oh, sorry, that causes pink eye in cattle does not cause pink eye in sheep and goats. So in sheep and goats, it's mostly caused by um, mycoplasma species or by chlamydia, for example. Chlamydia is a very important type of a bacterial organism that can lead to like abortion storms in your small stock. So it's also something worth talking about and I'll probably make a video later on about it. But it's also why I mostly choose the type of treatment protocol that I choose when it comes to treating pink eye in our small stock all right so what are the symptoms that you can look out for um usually it starts with just teary eyes or should i say watery eyes and excessive blinking and if you go close and you look you may see um that the eye like the white part of the eye is red as well as a swollen um eyelids and um, or red eyelids and then sometimes as it progresses you can see the sticky yellow discharge coming from the eyes okay um this disease is highly contagious meaning Meaning that it spreads very quickly i remember there was a case once that i attended um i mean one goat was affected and the following coming days all the goats were affected so it's kind of highly contagious and obviously flies play a role so if flies if there's too much flies like this time of the year where it's warm and raining there's usually a lot of flies if they're just chilling around the eyes that's how they usually just pick up infection from an infected goat to another goat and then it spreads that quickly so it's very important to avoid things like um overcrowding it's also important to make sure that when you are working 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 with the goats or the sheep that are affected you you wash your hands before moving on to the animals that are not affected and you disinfect the equipment that you used on the sick ones to the healthy ones okay so another thing me worth mentioning about this disease is that um it doesn't really kill your animals it really kills them unless there's a big accident where um maybe they they were partially blind and they couldn't see and an accident happened if they're not being properly looked after then in that way it can lead to death but most of the time they recover quite easily they recover quite nicely and then they can see again even if they were blind then they can see again um as long as you react um fast enough i would say you need to react as as fast as you possibly can and you need to take the necessary measurements to make sure that the animals don't injure themselves to make sure that the animals don't starve to death the, so that would involve things like you need to separate the sick ones from the healthy ones and make sure you put them in a small pen where they can be able to access water and food without causing injury to themselves or um, without any obstacles in their way all right 
so like i said it's a conversation so you can just pick what you can from the video and then i hope that it's making sense now let's talk about um treatment protocols okay so when it comes to treatment in my personal opinion because the cause the causative agents are not the same in sheep and goats as well as in cattle so um i tend to use different treatment approaches and that this has worked very well for me so in your small stock in your sheep and your goats and mostly I've, or should i just say goats because in the rural areas i've seen it a lot in goats but just for somebody who has sheep um who has, who has sheep you can use the same type of treatment right so for for, for goats and your sheep i tend to use long acting teramycin okay so long acting teramycin i would give it in the muscle and then i would also use it as a direct eye drop on the eye okay i do not like this this powder that's out there in the market you guys know what that powder is i do not like that powder because the eye is already inflamed the eye is already painful it's already very easily irritable then you come and you just throw that powder on top of the eye or in the eye and i just think i feel like it just makes things worse and it's just not kind to the animal so i prefer just injecting your goats and your sheep with long acting teramycin and repeat the treatment as much as it may uh, like as as much as it may be needed or as necessary as it may be needed or as much as the symptoms persist um remember long acting tends to be um effective for 72 hours so if you're going to repeat the treatment you only need to repeat it after 72 hours right and remember to use the correct dosage, the correct amount that is required. And then like a lot of communal slash rural area farmers, they don't stay at the farm, which is why I choose this method of treatment. They don't stay at the farm. So they will not be able to like um, give an eye drop that you need to give maybe over three days. Um, I mean, over three times per day, for example. So you do a long acting injectable teramycin. Then you can also take the same LA and put it one to two drops or two to three drops um in the directly in the eye and then you can repeat it again the following morning when you come back to the farm you need to be patient with this because um it can take about three to sometimes three to five weeks for you to see any changes but usually by the second or the third week you would usually start seeing some some type of a change and the eye will be looking better than this picture and it'll be going back to that picture and then, then you'll be seeing that okay the treatment is working and the animal will may may or will now start being able to move easily around without causing injury or bumping into things right and then when it comes to cattle, because of the type of bacteria that mostly causes um, this infection, I prefer a penicillin base. Um, type of treatment all right so penicillin based type of eye ointment you can also use something called chlorophenicol you can find chlorophenicol um, eye ointment in the human pharmacies i think it's a schedule two medication so you can buy it without needing a prescription from a veterinarian some people have successfully also used chlorophenicol in goats as well as in sheep um and then also obviously it's important to for the eye to be closely examined and make sure that there is no foreign material in the eye because sometimes the bacteria came as a secondary problem and it wasn't necessarily the primary cause of the eye infection so most of the time we need to make sure that there's no foreign body no grass seeds um, no funny stuff in the eye that might be the responsible reason for why you are having a problem with the animal's eyes okay guys so i hope this video made sense to someone um remember avoid overcrowding separate the sick um from the healthy ones because like i said it's quite uh, contagious it spreads quite quickly so as soon as you see it in one goat separate it separate that goat from the rest of the goat and big from the rest of the goats and begin treatment as soon as possible okay so if anything doesn't make sense or something else is going on at the farm that may be the reason why we're seeing these eye changes it's always very important to call in a vet whenever you've tried the home treatment and the suggestions that is available out there to the public and it's not working call in a vet and for those that can call in a vet as soon as possible those that are able to call in a vet as soon as possible sometimes it's easier to come deal with the problem as it starts instead of us coming to deal with it three to six weeks after it has started then that would be just creating other problems and it just becomes more expensive for you as a farmer.
okay guys thank you so much for watching i hope this video was helpful leave a question down in the um, comment section and i will properly respond to you guys if you like this type of content and you would like to see more of me and me explaining and having a conversation with you guys with um regards to animals and animal diseases please kindly let me know and give this video a thumbs up i really appreciate each and every one of you thank you see you next time bye